I have two important military bases, Barksdale Air Force Base and uh, Fort Polk. Fort Polk has JRTC, and we have these rotating um, uh, brigades that come in for training. Uh, would it make sense, could we streamline and lower cost by permanent lo permanently locating at least one of these brigades uh, at Fort Polk? We are adding, as you know, 100,000 acres. It's becoming a wonderful training site, even much better than it was. And I'll, uh, General Odenier, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Well, please. well, Congressman, as I said earlier, uh, first, the improvements that have made, been made at Fort Polk have been tremendous. I was just down there not too long ago. And the criticality of the training that we do there is irreplaceable. Uh, so it's a really valuable place for us to continue to go. However, that said, as I, I just told you, we're in the process now of reducing by 80,000 soldiers. And, and we're now reviewing where do they come out of. And so for us to think about moving and increasing somewhere is, is a very difficult time for us to do that. Right. We're trying to figure out what's, where are the best places for us to reduce our footprint. And that's what we're going through now. So I've got to figure out where I get 68,000 worth of structure uh, out of the Army, and it's going to affect every installation. So after that's done, and part of that process, we're looking at wh where do we want to sustain our, our bases and, and how do we want to sustain our capability across the Army. Fort Polk is one that we're going to have, we will absolutely continue because of the value of JRTC. Okay. But if we're able to reinvest there yet, I don't know yet. We're still reviewing that. Okay. Thank you, General. General Welsh, um, my concern, of course, uh, with Barksdale Air Force Base is the fact that we have a fleet of bombers that are older than many of the people in this room today, and it will probably fly another 30 years. Uh, but I do support the nuclear triad. I've heard it mentioned today. I think you do as well. Um, so uh, my concern, of course, is the program going forward of a modern bomber, um, the next generation bomber, we know that, that even if we commit to it, we've got another 12 years before the first one rolls off the assembly line. Uh, can you help me understand what the impact may be uh, on that, the, super, the next bomber fleet that, that we're seeing down the road, what sequester and, and any other things that we're doing uh, at the Pentagon may affect that? Congressman, the, the Long Range Strike Bomber program, uh, because of a change in the contract uh, uh, administration of mechanics here uh, earlier this year, isn't affected by sequestration this year. The impact would be as the top line decreases for sequest, whatever the, whatever the top line is for the future. Yes. Uh, that could has the potential to impact everything we're doing. Right. And so as we look at the programs going forward, once we have an answer on what the funding will look like in the future, we'll take a look at this. I think you know we're committed to the long-range strike bomber. It's something that is foundational to our Air Force for the future. Yes. And clearly, 60-year-old um, B-52s aren't going to extend for too much farther in the future. Yes. yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Has expired. Mr. Palazzo. Thank you, Mr.